Bitch, I be getting my way. He like it, he spin it, I want it, he pay. Pussy real good, I'ma sit on his face. Real boss, bitch, I don't need no tip. Big boss shit, I don't need no nigga. All this money I see, I can't see no nigga. Bad ass bitch, rich ass bitch. I like niggas, but I still fuck bitches. Thumb through the hundreds and fuck up the digits. Thumb through the hundreds and fuck up the digits. Big boss shit, I don't need no nigga. All this money I see, I can't see no nigga. What's up, everybody, and welcome to What's Up, Bree. We are back again. Um, I'm excited about this episode because I know a lot of people have been saying, you know, you do serious episodes. Where the fun episodes? What's going on with the pop culture and things of that nature? So I listened, and I am bringing it to you, okay? So this week, we are going to be talking about big things that have happened on social media, in the industry, and just everything above. I had to bring a special guest, somebody that resides in Atlanta, Georgia right now. He's really big in music. He's getting his feet wet. His artist, Kayla is who you just heard on the introduction so i'm let him introduce himself and tell you about him come on in ig <laughs> what's happening four on four to the four on four we do everybody i am as brianna said i am in atlanta obviously born and raised in milwaukee uh, moved to atlanta about two years ago to do music um, and I'm just honored to help my friend, you know, launch this off. She brought this to me. I just thought this was a dope idea. So I'm happy to be here. Okay. Give him a little background about the music. You know, we, we had to use the intro, get the music going. Yeah. So I want to just shout out my girl, my artist. Um, I've been working with her for almost a year now. Her name is K Money. If y'all like that song, check her out on Instagram at K-A-Y-Y-M-U-N-E-Y. Jokes on UEP dropping at the end of this month. It's about to go hard. We got to go roll out. So if anybody is listening from Atlanta, definitely be in tune because we're having a lot of stuff dropping here in the city and in Milwaukee. Check our page out. Yeah. So a lot of people know, like you said, you moved from Milwaukee to Atlanta. So that way you can kind of jump into the music career. How has your experience been going so far? Give them a little background because, you know, a lot of people come here and want to do music and go to Atlanta. So just just tell them what they got, got to look forward to, what they got to expect. Man, it's it's a big journey. Like, you know, I thought I was, you know, coming from a smaller city, you know, we don't have that many, I want to say, like, big opportunities. You know, coming to Atlanta, it's opportunities everywhere. I mean, I always get invited to stuff, you know, like 21 Savage Party, Lotto, you know, all these things. I don't go to them, but, you know, just a different scene from being from Milwaukee. So, you know, coming here, I just instantly thought, like, yeah, I'm going to be working at QC. I'm going to be at the biggest label. But, you know, it's a journey to everything. And anybody that is listening, if you are doing music or you are trying to be like an a just know that it takes time. Um, my journey, though, has been it's been awesome. I started in a studio, met met people, worked with different artists. Um, some people you are here on the radio, like Santana. I then sat in sessions with Lil Tekka, worked with Lil Yachty. So, you know. Just my journey has just been great. So, like I said, anybody that's up and coming, just, you know, put your best foot forward and don't give up because it really gets hard. Listen, I'm telling you, we we talk, we have conversations. He's definitely been in the studio. He's met artists, been arm to arm with people in the club. I always try to tell him, like, I'm coming to Atlanta so I can kick it with y'all because they be funny. It's everybody right. going to the scene. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so we're going to jump into this episode for the pop culture. Um, it's been a lot of stuff going on, especially the end of last year, beginning of this year. Like, so first and foremost, because this has been on Shade Room, it's on site, constant nonstop for the past couple of weeks, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. So <laughs> as you guys know, they are currently separated. Um, Kanye West has kind of made some moves on social media. I know a couple years ago, Kim was kind of upset because he made a comment about how he almost killed their child doing one of the little spiritual things he was doing the church on Sundays. And everybody was like, oh, he's spiraling out of control. He's going crazy. And now most recently, the big issue is him purchasing a home across the street from her house. Do you think he did that to be petty or do you think that's something they discussed about co-parenting? Um. I kind of feel like it might be something that's discussed. Obviously, for us, to people that don't have kids or just, you know, don't really know their inside history, 
it could look weird to us, but that might be something that makes sense for them because maybe he wants to be close to his family. Maybe he don't want to be too far. You know, him losing his mom has really impacted his life a lot. So, you know, maybe you just feel like he needs to be close at all times in case anything happens. I don't personally think it's that weird. I mean, everybody, every family dynamic is different. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. You got to definitely do what works best for you. Do you feel like it's weird only because he's been kind of like real public with saying like he want his family back. He want to be back with her. And then it's like now he got a girlfriend. That can be a little tricky because it's like, why are you trying? You got a whole new, you know, you got a new thing on the side. Why are you trying to jump and move across the street? That can be a little weird in that sense. But I do feel like if it was more than that, I feel like Kim would have came out and said something. She's talking about everything else. If if it was more, I feel like she would have said something in the press. Or I just feel like it would have been more. I don't think it's that. I just think it's just he want to be close to his family. And I think it is that too. Like. As you can tell, to me, what it seems like, of course, we don't know, like you said, we're on the outside looking in, that he's a good father. Like, he loves his kids. His kids love right. him. And maybe because they do have such busy schedules, it's like, okay, it's easier for you to be close. That way, if right. I need you to drop the kids off or I need you to keep the kids, they'll be, like, at arm's reach. Um, right. So, of course, we all know that they're technically separated right now. But do you think they're going to get back together? Like, do you think they're going to reconcile and be like, okay, we're we going to be married again? I don't see it for the kids. You don't? I don't see it. Do you see it? A part of me, I kind of do because I feel like, okay, so we've watched Kim Kardashian go through a bunch of different relationships. Right. We watched her go through the whole thing of blowing up with Ray J in a sex tape, putting her whole family on, which I ain't mad at you, girl. I would do the same thing. Um, and we watched her just like date different celebrities. And I don't know, this is the longest lasting relationship. And I kind of feel like, she enjoys like what they have like the whole him dressing her and you know them being out together in the spotlight and then it's like dude she had plenty of fucking kids for him like a woman not gonna do that like keep going through changes in her body and she's even openly said it like i don't want to be do pregnancy again like that was probably like one of my worst times i feel like it's a deep deep connection there i kind of feel like she might get back with him i don't see it. i really don't i think when somebody's done they're done she's a libra so anybody that know about astrology, you know Libras, they like to linger. I call them Libra and Libras. Lingering Lib <laughs> Libras, they like to linger. But once the Libras say they're done with you, they're done. I can give them that. I have tons of Libra friends. When mm -hmm. they say they're done with somebody, they're done when they put that foot down. So Kanye might be a little bit of hurt if he can't get Kim back. That's why he dressed as <laughs> a new girlfriend. Like and I think that's what's weird for me. Like The outfit that she had on the other night with that all black, all I can think of was like Kim. Like, are you trying to it. turn her into Kim or? I didn't see it. Yeah. But I know a lot of people don't think she's as bad, but I think she's a nice looking lady to me. You think I so? I think she's cute in her own way. Just because she don't have a conventional beauty, people don't, you know. But I think she's cute. She looks good to me. That could be. Yep. Too. I'm Kim and Kanye. I was, I was Kanye and Amber, though, too. I still feel like they was like the best dressed couple in hip hop. Of it's course. Like of course. <laughs> Can nobody touch their looks? So you guys know I like to do polls. So of course I had to ask my timeline. Like, do you guys think Kim and Kanye will reconcile? Twenty four percent said yes. They agree with me, and seventy seven seventy six percent agree with Najee. Like, nah, she done. They not getting back together. He messed up. She moving on. So is she really dating Pete Davidson, or was that just like? A I don't know what's going on because I didn't see something that said he's messing with Miley. Then I also seen. It's somebody else I've seen him that they say he's messing with. Um, can't think of who. But i just been seeing his day and floating around with different women. So I'm not sure if it's some. It might just be like a rebound thing. Like, I'm just, you know, messing with him on some some things. But it ain't nothing. And is there is a such thing as dating. Like, people do date. Right. So you may see them one week with somebody. See right. them next week with somebody else. Mind your she business. She <laughs> might not feel like it's working. First of all, he's a kid to me. Like, she's grown. He seems still like a kid, so she probably see like, oh, I don't want him. You know, Kanye was more her speed. They're on the same age bracket. She probably don't have nothing in connection with him. Like you said, it's dating. Moving around. Well, since we talking about the Kardashians, we might as well move on to the other sister. <laughs> so this has been something that has been going on since she has been with this man. And, of course, we're not here to judge because we all probably didn't been in a relationship a little bit longer right. than we were supposed to. Um, but Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson, he does it again. Now he got a baby. 
thoughts? So it's like, what's your what thoughts? Um, so speaking from personal experience, there's one thing to cheat on a woman, but when you can see another human being with somebody else, if Chloe decides to stay with him, now she has a new child because you can't just outcast that child. And at this point, how can I trust you around her? You've been able to hide her this entire time. And I'm finding out about it through social media. And I think, or maybe she knew previously and maybe they talked about it and the girl decided to kind of go public. But it's just like, dude, you're going to keep disrespecting me. You're going to keep embarrassing me publicly. And now you had a baby on me. Like, what what we doing here? Like, either you want to be with me or you don't. It's just weird to me because it's like, okay, men get caught cheating all the time. Regular men cheat. It's not just men that are famous or have a little bit of money. But my thing personally is I would think that if you are famous, you would be a little bit more discreet. But it's it kind of seemed like he just don't give a fuck. Like, I'm just going to soil my world oats everywhere all around and we going to be good. I feel like you pretty much said what I would have said. <laughs> but just to add on to that, I just feel like, first of all, as a man, it's like, you got to take some accountability. I mean, I've watched the show. I've seen him apologize about the Jordan stuff and other, you know, things that he's done. And I just feel like at this point, you need to get help because obviously just trying to co-parent it or whatever they're doing, it's not working. You're in a relationship with her. You let you kiss Jordan. You left your first baby mama for her. It's just, it's too much. You as a grown black man, you're showing all these kids that look up to you. I don't even know if this man, first of all, I don't even know if they even look up to him. Is he even still playing basketball? I, so I guess, <laughs> I guess one of the things is he told her, he was like, I don't know why you're doing this because I'm retiring this year anyway. Because I forgot he played basketball, to be honest. Because all I new, At this point, he's a reality TV star, Instagram person like everybody else because I don't even hear this man on the court. He ain't shot a free throw since. This nigga shooting loads of babies. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga shooting loads. That's basically what he's doing. Me. For real. Like I in the beginning when I was like, oh she's daddy basketball star Tristan Thompson. And then ever right. since then it's been cheat. Cheat. Caught with this woman. This scandal. Da, 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 da. And with the Jordan thing since you touched the topic, do you feel like they kind of went a little bit too hard on her seeing as how I, mad Look, I love black women to the depth of me because I don't want people to think that I'm turning on them for this, but this is truly how my feel, how I feel, my opinion. Jordan was wrong. You don't, I don't care how you try to twist the play. She, she was wrong. Kylie helped build your platform. Up. I don't care if you knew Will Smith, you always, you grew up with them, you've been within the industry. No, I know you from Kylie, just like the rest of the world. She gave you a platform to be who Jordan is now. Had we never seen, had we never seen them together as friends, we would not know who she is. So I just think that the loyalty, of course, Tristan is a dog. They knew that it's the loyalty. You was like a sister to them. Their family took you in. Like you was this girl's best friend, and you kissed her man. I don't see how people can. I know social media they really was rallying for Jordan because you know the Kardashians aren't saints. They have done stuff to people, but at the same time, I'm talking about for this particular situation. I think. Jordan was wrong. She was wrong. It wasn't right. I just know Kylie was crushed because I know she didn't want to cut her off. Because even on the show, she was saying, like, I still want to be her friend. But and then this is my sister. Like, I can't turn on my blood. Like, and that's the you, thing. They were friends for, like, she, but she did. I will get that to you. She bossed her all the way up, got her surgery, got her a car. Everywhere you saw Kylie, you saw Jordan. So it's like, she was putting her I, in her campaigns, her everything. Like, it's just a loyalty thing, like, and the fact that it, you didn't even bring it to them first, too, on top of it. So it's just, it was a lot of mess to it. You let it get to them back from other sources. Like, you wasn't even going to say something about it. I just think it was messy. But Black Twitter and Black people hate to Jordan. So, like, they dragged Kardashians. And they was with Jordan. It kind of made Jordan, like, to another level, kind of mm -hmm. for help to her, her career. So... It definitely did because her following got bigger. Then she started going off and doing other stuff. Hang with Meg Thee Stallion <laughs> and got a video like interested. Right. Yeah. So with all that being said, do you think Chloe gonna take Tristan back? As proven as we see before, I don't think this is the end. 
Don't see it. But I guess we gotta wait till the Hulu show come out. <laughs> yeah, because they are they coming out with a new show on Hulu. So we'll have to just see then. I'll be honest, I ain't gonna lie. I tried to reconcile my situation after it happened. So that's why I feel like she's definitely gonna take that man back. Because I feel like she's literally changed her whole entire being. Like, and that's what I think bothers me the most because it's like as women sometimes we try so hard to be what a man wants and that still ain't enough this girl done got so many surgeries and all and you know what i think it is too i think it's a psychological thing and i think a lot of people don't notice that because you got to think about it they technically tried to deem chloe as the ugly sister like everybody was saying that her nose was funny she, she looked different mean. her body type yeah. so it's like i feel like tristan played off of that he probably knew like okay she still got some insecurity that she's dealing with Ain't no telling what this man tell her when we not around. I feel like he literally got mind control over her. So I, I honestly feel like she going to go back. I, I I could see her going. It wouldn't shock me. It would shock me more if she left. It wouldn't shock me if she went back. It would be like, oh, okay. Because I have female friends. I see shit on TV. I watch reality. I just know. I know how women are. Women, they like to give men third, fourth, fifth chances. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just love just be enough, I guess. Listen, love will make you do some. Love will make you do wrong. <laughs> so, you know, I had to ask my Instagram followers. I said, do you think Chloe's going to take Tristan back? And, of course, 73% say, yep, she's going back. And 27% said, no, nah, we think she done. I don't know, y'all. I don't think she done. I guess we'll see because we, we going to know. It's going to become public. Um, So let's talk about a little bit of music going on. So um, everybody knows Kodak Black song. Super Gremlin has kind of blew up. I like listening to it in my car. It gets me turned up. And Big Lotto came out with the remix. Um, so what, what what you feel about that, especially with you being in the music industry? You know, I, anybody that's around me know that I'm rooting hard for Lotto. I think she's like the next little supreme. You know, you got the Cardis, the Megans, the Dojas, the Sweeties, City Girls. And I think Lotto is following right up behind them. I think she's about to have big mainstream success. Um, as far as the remix, I liked it. I thought it was dope. It's showing that she still can jump in her little freestyle bag, you know, coming for, off of, um, what's the name of the song? Um, uh, BDE, Big Big Dick Energy. Yeah, coming I off really- of that, you know, that was popish. So now she's trying to, you know, she's just showing y'all she can still do both. So I fuck with it. I like it. I like it. I was going to say, I like that she can really rap. Like, I know she don't like talking about the Jermaine Dupri show, but I feel like that helps her because, Mm -hmm. like, she one of the artists that we know, like, she really wrote her own shit. Like, she can spit bars. She's been doing this for a long time. She got it out the mud. How I feel about it. I know a lot of people try to kind of come at her sideways about her name, which is why she changed it. And they're like, oh, you not really black. Um, You trying to do this. You trying to do that. So they tried to basically drag her. I like seeing her success personally. Um, I feel like she a cute girl. I feel like she seemed like she down to earth, just like the TikToks and the reels that she posts. Yeah. And I feel like she can really like, I like it when females freestyle. Like when Megan Thee Stallion was like going through her little thing to where she was dropping freestyles in the car or just out and about that's the type of rap that i want to see like right. i'm cool with the pop and all the other type of stuff but i want to see that you can actually like spit on somebody beat facts and i i'm the same way i love i love the just i love being versatile and that's something i love about doge cat and i feel like that's the lane that lotto is going to go in as well i feel like she can be versatile and she can do different stuff she can play with her voice you know rap has evolved so much that you don't have to just be a hood rapper or just street or that you can do a song with do a leap but then turn around and have a Kodak black song you know what i'm saying so i like that i feel like she's stepping out into different territories it's more money too especially when you can like cross over everybody knows exactly. there's always gonna be Drake cross over he was on degrassi like <laughs> that was little jimmy he got shot and got paralyzed and now he's just like <laughs> he's, a, he's the it boy when it comes to rap right now. Like he definitely. So I mean, who who super grimly you like better? Are you going with Koda Black or are you going with Lotto? Unfortunately, Big Lotto, I'm gonna have to not go with you. I gotta go with Kodak. <laughs> 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 gotta go with Kodak. You know, it takes a really the only person that's mastered making um, original. A, a, a feature, I mean, a remix, I'm sorry, a remix over the original is like Nicki or Lil Wayne. Okay. It, it's hard to master. So, unfortunately, I don't feel like it was better. It was just good. Codex is just superior. 
See, I'm the opposite. I like Lotto's better. And maybe it's because I'm a female too. So it's like right. I can relate to what she was saying. Right. I don't do perks. So I ain't going to take no perk and know it's fake because I'm a super grim. So and, like, right. <laughs> and But she probably ain't taking perks either. That's just the illusion to get y'all to. That's the something we want to hear. That man that. is on perks. Did you see what he been doing in the news lately? So you telling me he ain't really taking part? Yeah, I'm saying, I don't know if it's a perk. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I like Lotto's better. I don't know. Maybe it's because she a female and I'm just like being biased right now, but I, I liked her version of Super Gremlin. But I bought Kodak's too. Like I played it for my friend the other day. She didn't even know. She like, what's Super Gremlin? And she's like, oh, I like this. So yeah. And I had to ask the people. I said, who's Super Gremlin is better? Of course, 90% definitely said they're giving it to Kodak. So we're going we gonna to give him his little props. We're going to give him his accolades. And then 10% agree with me. I like big lottos. So whatever. Um, so in other news of music, it's a lot of allegations going on right now about Mr. Trey Songz. Um, about him being like a, a rapist, being aggressive, sexually assaulting women. And it's like, dude, is this about to be another R. Kelly incident? Like, that's what I'm feeling like it's about to turn into. I, <laughs> I never, you, you, uh, yeah. Like, I don't even know where to start. It's like, um, I'll say this. I don't want to go too deep. Too deep. I'll just say this. Black men, y'all got to do better. Y'all have to do better. It's been time and time. You know what's so crazy? I was just watching this um, documentary about the 90s and how these models and stuff, this is a little off topic, but it's about the same thing, but about all these models um, dealing with all these men, and guess who names came up? Epstein and Weinstein. Epstein and Weinstein. You know, the two men that yep. have all these allegations with them. You know, it's like, my thing is with y'all people that's doing this stuff behind the scenes, do y'all think it's not going to catch up to y'all? Especially now with y'all got this Me Too movement that has made women more comfortable to come out and speak and stand their ground and have a voice on top of social media and blogs that love to be messy and people love to go to, um, you know, just the shade room and all these other different mm -hmm. websites and places to get all this shit out. So it's like, if you're going to be doing shit like that, you have to you have to know that it's going to come back out and goes back to say black people, y'all have to do better. I ain't gonna say black men, all oh, men, y'all gotta do better. Why? It's just why. And it's sad because we should have believed Kiki Palmer when she said this like three years ago. But you know, everybody was like, no, nah, Kiki. Mm -hmm. And I was just about to say, I feel like they wrote her off because, like you said earlier, about how people feel about Julie or Julie, whatever, uh, the Kanye West new girlfriend. She wasn't the look that they would have thought he would have went for so it's like okay her body not done she don't have right. feelings she not a hot girl right. why would he try to force himself on kiki palmer but it's like bro it seemed like she got a dope personality and a lot of men these days they don't date just for looks i know a lot of men that feel like i if i connect with you with your mind everybody don't have to think you look good and it's like i feel like they wrote her off and now because other women that have maybe a bigger platform or may look a little bit different are coming out and saying stuff now they want to take it back oh well kiki palmer told us a couple years ago that this was going on so now we're going to dig up her interviews and add to the fire that's already burning when why y'all didn't say nothing last time so i don't know i feel like and my thing is another thing for women um men that seen this type of music it seemed like it's a trend like the r kelly's and the tanks and the trey songs y'all thinking that they singing this music about sex and that that's not who they really are as men they're able to present it really well because that's who they are like they like sex they like doing different things in the bedroom there's no limits for them so i personally it's in their character to me because it's like think about the songs that r kelly was making like Right. It was some freaky shit going on. It's like what? to bounce off of that, it's like even I was back to watching this documentary on Hulu. Y'all should watch it's called Nineties Dark in the Nineties. They was even talking about Tupac even raping that girl. And to me, it's like, well, damn, I didn't believe that shit when I first heard that too. Mm -hmm. But it's true. I know she wasn't lying. So it's like y'all, I don't know, women, you just really have to sometimes the money or just because somebody got a bag or whatever, sometimes it ain't even worth it. If you can, like you said, listen to these songs. I'm starting to believe that these people rapping about some of the shit they're really doing. Yep. You gotta just know that sometimes they ain't work for you. You might have to just go get the nigga that's working a nine to five and not. Or go get the, the producer or somebody, the nigga that's right, right. 
because these stars, once they get this fame and all this money and all this clout and everybody looking and putting all these directions, it does work their mind. Sometimes they reality is not even what we think. The people behind the camera are the cool people. Then. <laughs> Tommy, of course, tell us on the people behind the camera, the cool people, because he's one of the guys behind the camera. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so speaking of that, in men and music, that you know, there's something I don't know if this story is true or not, but Drake and him putting hot sauce in the condo. Some girl is now trying to sue him, which I don't know how she thinks this is gonna work in court. Cause she had her little night with him. He went through the condom away, and I'm assuming he put hot sauce in it. They're saying that he did that so he could dilute his sperm. She take her ass right in the bathroom, and I guess she tried to put the sperm inside of her, and it's like, okay, what were you doing? And now you mad because your pussy on fire. And it's just like, that's what you get. You can't sue him because it's like, bro, he did it for a reason. Obviously, whatever it was that he thought about you, it was right. Like, women are really out here looking for a come up it's like okay i'm gonna get pregnant by such and such or i'm gonna have a baby by such and such and then i'm gonna just blow up it's like that's the only thing that women want or they just i don't even i don't even sometimes think they care to blow up i just think they just want the money you know that's the new way of getting a bag is fucking a rich nigga fucking somebody that got upper echelon money and they don't even care these people not even caring about the broken homes i look at people like joey Future baby mama, they never even had a relationship. But guess what? Now she's getting paid. I like all his other baby mamas. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't care. It's just about the money. It's just about the money. Like, they don't care to be famous. That His last baby mama fucking just had, he had a baby with. She don't give a fucking, fucking with future. She just wants the money. And it's like, y'all have the women. You got to kind of know that you're worth a little bit more than just fucking for money. Because now you're bringing kids into broken homes. For what? And I don't think they really care about that either. Like, and it takes a lot to parent a child. Like I said, it's all the time. Like all my friends, my sister, my mom, like being a parent is a full time job. And it, it, it and I ain't even gonna call it a job because job have open and ending hours. It's right. 24 seven. You right. can't just decide I'm not going to parent my child today and then think that it's not going to affect the child in the future. So it's like, I never understood that either. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm pretty sure dating a celebrity is cool. You get the perks of always being in a paper or you get to be at the hottest parties. I'm pretty sure your lifestyle going to be a little bit different, but it's like, bro, I'm not never running to no bathroom to go get a condom that somebody threw out to try to use the sperm to get pregnant. Like, what you doing? It's just that to me is wild. That's really wild. But what are you going to sue him for? He didn't give you something. He he just put hot sauce. So I don't know what the... I personally don't know what the claim could be. I don't know. Maybe she do got a case. I don't know. I just don't see what she's going to say. I really don't see it because my thing is, if you went and got the condom, the sperm would have been a different color. Last time I checked, sperm is like white, clear, whatever, whatever. But you didn't put it in the condom. He put it in the condom. Yeah, so I guess he like so his dick in- was on fire while he was fucking her. No, so after the fact, so I guess like once they was done having sex and he came in the condom, he went to the bathroom, threw the condom in the garbage, and I'm assuming he put the hot sauce pack in there and then. Threw oh, it she lost. This, this- is, uh, this <laughs> yeah, is the dumbest man. I ever had. I got a question for Drake though. What? Where did the hot sauce come from? Like, was it in the bathroom already? Did he walk in there with it? He probably like, already, like Brandon said, he probably knew what type of female she was. And he probably just know in general when he fucking random bitches, okay, I got to make sure I do a hot sauce right after I take the condom off. I, you know what I'm saying? He probably already knew. Probably a routine for him, especially these one-off bitches. He know he never fucking with again. Hot sauce is a strong smell, too. That's why I'm trying to figure out, like, she's just dumb. Is she doing this for clout at this point, or did that really happen? Either way, go, baby girl, you don't have a case. Did her Instagram or something pop up? Her social media? I think they, I think it's on site when they broke the story. I don't think they disclosed her information. I think it was one of them things to where she went directly to the blog with it and was just like, this is what right, happened, and I'm gonna do him. And it's just weird. Like, knock it off, get a job, do something, find something else to do. <laughs> but this ties in with everything that we pretty much been saying. You know, I wanted to touch bases on the social media mind warp. Um, for example, a story broke that Nelly supposedly lost a bag with three hundred thousand dollars in it, and the female that returned it, he only gave her a hundred dollars. And everybody, like all in the comments, like he bogus. He could have gave her way more than that, and she's stupid for returning the money. And then days later, Nelly comes out like, I don't know what y'all talking about. There was never a bag. 
nothing was ever taken from me or returned stop it with the false narratives and i feel like sometimes a lot of like these it's on site hollywood unlock like y'all got a fact check first before y'all push stories like i understand y'all want the following and y'all want y'all page to pop but it's like at what point do you do your due diligence and fact check before you put out fake news well unfortunately <laughs> we are in the generation where people don't care I just was looking at like how Tasha K, another popular blogger, um, just went to court yesterday and got sued by Cardi B. She has to pay her ten million back for lying on her name, saying that she has herpes and um, she was fucking people while she was pregnant. Like this is social media. This is the new era that we live in. It's not tabloids walking outside no more. It's not newspaper. It's blogs and internet comments all day. So you know, I don't think people care or. I don't want to say care. Well, I don't think people care. That's just what it is. People just don't give a fuck. They want quick money, quick clicks, quick bait. And of course, we hear something like that. People are going to run to be messy to go look and see in the comments of what's going on. That's just the generation we live in. We're in the era of the new way of clout and fame is through our phones, social media. You no longer have to high like back in the day people didn't want to have a sex tape now people are happy by having sex tapes you know what Listen, I'm saying? eager to put it out pamela anderson had a damn sex tape and she was crying she was trying to sue that damn electrician man that leaked that shit now you got kim kardashian fucking getting famous damn near put a whole they all fucking billionaires you know what i'm saying so it's just like it's just a different time when it's just that's just how it is now I don't know. Do you think it'll ever change or you just feel like like it's just gonna ride the way? I think it evolves. The nineties they had, nineties, eighties, so on, so forth, they had newspaper, they had um talk shows that was blogging, you know. They had different ways. Then you come to the two thousands and start going to the internet and then now we in another decade, now it's our phone. So I just think it's gonna keep evolving to different types of ways. It's, I don't think it's ever gonna end. You always gonna have some type of gossip blog something it's gonna always be there i just think as we get older it's always gonna evolve into something else and that's why i say all the time if you follow me on social media i always post like at least once a month like i have a love hate relationship with social media because don't get me wrong it's helped a lot of small businesses it's helped me with my platform getting my podcast out there it's it's helping people do big things but at the same time i feel like it's really fucking with people's minds like it's making people do dumb shit it's making people not have substance like social media basically got everybody feeling like i'm gonna give you the same energy you give me i'm gonna get my lick back oh yeah. i need to have this type of vehicle i need to be rocking this that and the third and it's just like it's ruining everything like nobody's really authentic anymore friendships aren't real relationships are based off of clout and it's just like i'm at the point to where like i'm a little old school so it's like it's scary out here like dating is scary friendships are scary it's just like you don't know whether you coming or going at this point i agree that uh definitely to every point especially when it comes to like friendships relationships it's like it does get based off of social media you know you can make a post about i hate that my friend gave me a, a cheeseburger now you got your friend making posts about you spending all your tea. you know what i'm saying like that's how social media is even relationship like you might have a man and you can't be too weird because he texts the, you know, likes it, but it's just that's what mm -hmm. social media has come to now. And that's what, unfortunately, that's our new reality. And then when we have kids and they get that, it's just like I said, that's why I said it just evolves with time. Like it's just, it only, I don't think it's going to get better. I think it's just going to stay the same. This is probably how they felt before there was the internet. You had to get on TV and look and hear about you might have got sued because you didn't clear a sample. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it just rolls with the time. And I think that ties in into something too. I know we discussed that we wanted to touch this topic. Lisa Ray, um, she has a podcast with Selena Johnson and two other ladies. And she brought up the Ari situation. Um, Ari recently just got dropped um, from Savage Fenty because she made some comments about domestic abuse and how women are pretty much doing pity parties and it's your fault. We all know and we all saw what happened to Rihanna with the Chris Brown situation. Um, Drea Michelle got dropped a couple years back for laughing about domestic abuse. So I'm not sure why Ari would turn around and get on social media and do the same thing. Um, she definitely fumbled the bag with that. Um, and like Lisa Ray said, these influencers 
are not celebrities. They Real not celebrities celebrity. have to, they're held to a different standard. They have to sign NDAs or there's certain things that they're not allowed to do because of contracts and biting agreements that they have. So how do you feel about like the influencers? Like, I think, I feel like the only influencer that really don't be in a whole bunch of mess, I feel like she unfortunately has been as of lately is Jada. I wouldn't even say Jada because I personally thought Jada was more of a quiet person, but I think, you know, but see, I'm not even going to say that because it takes me back to when I think that, you know, social media, sometimes it can be hard. And I do think people like Ari that's from South Side of Chicago, then, you know, probably had to struggle a little bit in her life, finally got all this money, you know, happy, able able to take care of her family and, you know, Sometimes it is hard. She did a popular rapper, and then you got all these people just constantly judging you every single day. You know, she had that beef with Ra Ali. Um, that was really big, and, you know, defending herself. So it's like you constantly got to defend yourself. And then it's like if you don't defend yourself, then it's like you feel like people create their own narrative. Then that gets spun out of control. So I just – I'm 50-50 with it. Sometimes I don't feel like they should get dropped from these things because it's really hard. We're not celebrities, so we don't – we just deal with a little regular day, but I just can only imagine every day you wake up, it's a new piece of hate or a new article or something. Somebody says you didn't did this, you know? So I do feel like she was wrong for saying that. And I do think that she should have maybe got a warning. Even Dre, I think they should have maybe been put on like a warning. But this goes into say, like what Lisa Ray said, they're not celebrities. They're just people that got popular from the app and they influence the culture of what's going on right now. I don't think they should be held as a standard of a celebrity. When I think of a celebrity, I think of like supermodels, like Naomi Campbell's, I think of Lady Gaga's, the Beyonce's, Bradley Cooper, like those are celebrities. Those are people that I think of, Chelsea Handler, like just off the top of my head, those are celebrities to me. I don't think of like Jada's and Ari's and Dierra's, people that got pop off of YouTube. I think they can become a celebrity, but I don't think, it's the same. I just think it's, I think they still work their way up to, to the point. So I don't think influencers and celebrities should be held on the same, like, playing field. And another thing, too, I feel like maybe they can get branding or, like, media coaches, somebody that lets them know, like, okay, what's appropriate to respond to, what you got to ignore. Because you do got to have tough skin being a celebrity. You're always in the public eye. Everything that you say and do is going to be scrutinized. So maybe she just got to work on it. And they're young, too. So maybe once she right. get a little bit older. She'll calm down a little bit, but she can't be fumbling in a bag like that because Rihanna about to open up stores now, and it's like, dude, you just played yourself out of some money. Yeah, I don't think it was right for her to get on there and say that, but at the same time, I, I don't live her lifestyle. So I just, like I said, I only can imagine waking up every single day and people are saying, you did this, you did this, you a hoe, you fucking for money, you ain't got no real business, you'll take care of your son, you getting sued for, you know, it's just, I just want myself to know how I would feel like, you always got to feel like you got to defend yourself. So it's, I just, it's just, it's tricky. I think even look at Cardi. She's one of the biggest fucking rappers in the world. She's just fucking arguing with Cuban dollars over some three-year-old shit. You know, so it's like you Listen. always got to defend yourself. So it's easier said than done. Which is true, which is true. Well, one thing I definitely want to tell you based on before we go, because this been whooping our ass since right. 2020. <laughs> I don't right. know what to call it. Uh COVID. I'm a crime, Omarion, flu, flu Rona. Now it's flu Rona. <laughs> Delta crime. It's a lot going on. It's COVID. Okay, COVID-19. And it's stressing me out a little bit because I've been blessed and lucky enough. And let me not. Is this some wood around here, Tommy? I need to knock on some wood because I don't want to jinx myself. <laughs> um, I've been blessed enough. <laughs> you say everything fake. I've been blessed enough to make it through this pandemic without getting COVID. I've definitely had colds. I've definitely had flus, but I have not experienced COVID as of yet. And I just feel like every time I turn around, it's a new variant. It's new rules. First, it was okay. CDC, you got to quarantine for 14 days. Then it went down to 10. Now it's five travel restrictions and i just feel like like it's literally COVID has been changing our life for the past two years and i'm i'm over it like knock it the fuck off yeah COVID for me has been crazy i caught COVID, i got vaccinated because i caught COVID, and that shit was terrible like i don't wish that shit on nobody um for me it's just like 
I think everybody should get vaccinated. You know, I was definitely one of people like, no, fuck that shit. Hell no. I don't know if they put any, but it's like, as you can see in the past, like three, four, five weeks, it's been like 80,000 mutations. Man. And I just think that people just got to protect themselves. If you don't, if you want to be here, because you don't know how it can happen. You know, for instance, you seen how I had it. You seen how your, you know, your sister had it. You just don't know how it can affect you. I seen how it affected some of my friends. My own family, a couple of my family members died. So it's like, um, you just got to really just play it by ear and just be smart. Like, if you can get vaccinated, I tell people all the time, go get your ass vaccinated. Who gives a fuck? At least if you catch it, you might just be down for two days opposed to, you could be one of the people in the hospital on a respirator. You don't know. So don't juggle with your life like that. But as far as the COVID, I just think it's going to be like the flu at this point. The fact that it's keep mutating into other shit, Donkey Kong, T-Rex, all this extra shit, it's definitely going to be here forever. It's giving like the flu and the common cold at this point. And that's what I feel like. So I feel like at this point, what's going to happen is just like they say, oh, you can get the flu. You can get pneumonia. You can get bronchitis. COVID is going to be one of those things that carries on. It may die down, but I really don't feel like it's disappearing or going anywhere anytime soon, especially with the CDC not even being able to really pinpoint. And I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there to where they're like, okay, the government is putting it out there. Y'all telling us to get vaccinated. First, it was the vaccine will prevent you from getting it. Then people start getting it with the vaccination. Now it's oh, so the vaccine can't prevent it. But it'll just make the systems the symptoms less. And I'll be honest, I know people that are vaccinated that got COVID and their experience was totally different from somebody that wasn't vaccinated. They said things like, oh, well, my throat hurts or I got a headache or, you know, I'm sneezing and coughing. But, you know, I can still move around. And other people were like, no, I was down. I can't move. I can't get out of bed. It felt like I got hit by a car. I can't taste or smell things of that nature. I just want if it is something that the government is pushing, because, of course, I don't care what nobody say. COVID has put a lot of money in people's pockets, especially businesses. Um, if this is something that they're doing, trying to f- like fluctuate or put more money back into the world so that stuff can kind of like keep going and moving. At this point, when do you realize that politics is not important, more important than a human being or life? A lot of people lost family members. Um, I had an uncle who passed away from COVID. I have friends that have lost family members from COVID. And it's just like, it's fucked up because everybody says, oh, well, they had underlying health issues. That may be true, but if COVID would not have came about, those underlying health issues wouldn't matter because they've been able to survive and live with them this long. So I think that's how COVID kind of like is throwing me off a little bit because it's like it's ruining people's lives. Like a lot of people when COVID first happened, unemployment was backed up. They lost their jobs. They didn't know how they were going to pay their rent, feed their kids, keep their lights on and stuff like that. And there are programs out there. So I guess help you pay rent and things of that nature. But it's like from business owners that I know, people that have tenants, it's been a slow, slow process. Like community advocates, for example, was paying people rent, but it's taking them three to four months to get the checks to the landlords. And the landlord's like, shit, I get you said you got to prove, but you ain't put no money in my pocket. You damn near finna get evicted. So it's like, I just feel like the government... If they did put it out there, they didn't think this all the way through because it, it's a big ass effect on everybody. And I, I don't like it. They need to knock it off. They just they just put this out there. To, I to mean, so the reason why. So w- as the United States, we're in debt. And my thing is, I feel like how they're looking at it as we going to put this out here. We're going to act like we got the vaccine. We're going to sell it to other countries to try to get money and bring it back over here and act like we just, you know, cure cancer or something and they really didn't because people are still being affected by it so yeah i I definitely do think it's politics involved in all of this for sure i wouldn't be surprised because just like cancer and everything else is a damn business all this shit is a business i wouldn't be surprised i mean it's a billion dollar business that's not going out of style right all this shit is all the world is a business somebody owned a damn hospital I didn't know that until a couple years ago. How the hell you own a damn hospital? I thought that's where people supposed to just go. Somebody owns that. So, you know, when you see shit like that, that does make you start thinking other ways. I, I don't put nothing past anything. Because what's world. weird to me is you can diagnose something, but you can't find a cure to it. Like, no, nah, right. y'all know y'all know what can cure. Y'all just don't want to. And then when they do find, I know people hate Dr. Stabby, but when people do think they find a cure, they end up dying or be dead or get killed, you know? Like, fine, know like falling off the face of the earth. Like, what the fuck? Like, what's going on? Like, 
That man said he could cure herpes. He knows how to cure cancer. He go to even if he was body. lying, because I know there's so many conspiracy theories around him. They say he was saying put the whatever. Even if he was lying or don't, it's the fact that he was saying that he did do this and he did this for people and the shit he just died. They killed him, whatever. It just shows that even if they knew how to cure it, they don't want people to know. Not at all. Because think about it. it. It's a business. That's why I say cancer. How the fuck we get? How the fuck people coming out of damn day mama with leukemia and shit like that? How? Why? Because it's the shit they putting in food. How else are Ooh. we supposed to get cancer? Drinks, all that. Steroids. Make, steroids. make the big ass chickens. They'll scare me. Like, and maybe that's another reason why I don't eat drummies, and I always ask for all flats because I. It just makes me cringe. <laughs> Can't do it. So I did want to ask people like, how has the pandemic pandemic, sorry, personally affected your life? Somebody said eating entirely too much. I definitely, my weight has been fluctuating between like 180 and like 200 and some pounds. And I don't like it. I definitely been eating. Um, somebody said they powered up. Somebody said I made some beds. And my girl did, my home girl definitely did make some beds. Um, somebody said not really much, which is a blessing, but sad to see others around me affected by it. And somebody said I'm fat. Girl, you're not fat. You're beautiful. Other people were saying that they got to spend more time with their family. It kind of opened their eyes to a lot of things. So how do you feel like the pandemic has affected you? Um, I definitely ran them bands up a little bit last year. Um, <laughs> um, I feel like it's I moved in the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? So for me, the pandemic has been great in certain aspects. Um like I said, I moved, I got some money out of here, did some scamming shit. You don't know about that, but I did some scamming shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and it really, I'm able to get jobs. Like, I've had nothing but work from home jobs. So I've really been blessed. I can't really complain outside of getting COVID. There's nothing really for me to complain about. I, I feel blessed okay. during this pandemic. And I mean, just to still be here to wake up every day, because I could be one of the people dead and respirated for getting COVID. You know what I'm saying? So. I think it's affected me pretty decently. I think the pandemic has taught me to kind of think broader. Um, I started my podcast. I enjoy my podcast. It's therapeutic to me. I like talking to people. I like having guests. I like interacting. Um, I just recently started a cleaning business, Thoroughly Tidy. We can do commercial, wow. residential. Wow. We, we clean it all. And if you know me, all my friends always say, like, I think you got OCD. I keep a clean house. I don't play that. Well, um, y'all need to book it, girl. If you are, if any of Brianna's friends are watching, y'all know home girl will clean. She will clean some shit. She will come to your shit and clean. This girl has OCD. Book her. She will. If I walk into my friend's house and this stuff out of place and I know where it's going, guess what? It's getting put up. Okay. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, so I think it, it made it pushed me. It made me think. It made me it made me be more appreciative of the people that I have around me. Um, it made me do more research. It made me read more. I'm really starting to I think grow as a woman. That's what COVID did for me. Tommy, you you got something to say? How did COVID or the pandemic kind of affect you? Who is this Tommy guy? Like, why he ain't getting a camera? my producer? He they want you to come on the camera, Tommy. <laughs> you want to see who you is? Come you... on, just slide <laughs> on out. He said, I've never. It's a first for everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I am a actually an artist by nature, and I have never been able to actually uh, practice my craft. But COVID and the pandemic and the um, the quarantine got me painting again. So. Uh, Doing some uh, oil paintings. It's two of them actually. Those are prints on the wall. Those two with big N. Oh, like, you uh, did! Wow. Yeah, those are two um, that I did. Those are the prints. The originals got sold. So y'all, he good. So I'm, I'm I'm not making bands, but you know I'm paying bills. Keep going, and you will for sure. Yeah, thank you. you in a city that do support you if they like it, man. Well, this was a fun episode. I enjoyed it. You know, it's a little bit different. I know I'm always on here dropping gems and things of that nature, but the people wanted to me to lighten it up a little bit. So I had to give it to you. Najee, thank you so much for coming on. No, this thank thing. you so much for having me. Um, it was a pleasure to be here. I love this. And right back. Of course. So tell the people where they can find you. Like, let them know. Yeah. So like I said earlier, if you're in Atlanta, you can do music or anybody in Milwaukee. Come find me. Holler at me. I got some connections and resources for you. My name is N A A J I A A A. Wait, two A's. L I M at Instagram. 
Check out my artist, K Money, on Instagram, K A Y Y M U N E Y. Um, yeah, hit me up. All righty. Well, that is another episode that we closing out. I want to thank you guys who continue to support the podcast, give feedback, do the polls. Without you, the podcast does not move the way that I need it to. And I really, really appreciate all of you guys. Next week, we'll be getting into the topic of lost and child welfare. I have a wonderful guest, Ashley Stokes, coming on and also a wonderful guest, Marcus. They're going to talk about how being in foster care has affected them. Good, bad and all that in between. So thank you again for tuning in and we will see you next week on What's Up Bree and we out! Bad little bitch, I begin my way He like it, he spin it, I want it, he pay Pussy real good, I'ma sit on his face Real boss bitch, I don't need no tip Big boss shit, I don't need no nigga All this money I see, I can't see no nigga Badass bitch, rich ass bitch I like niggas, but I still fuck bitches Thumb through the hundreds and fuck up the digits Thumb through the hundreds and fuck up the digits Big boss shit, I don't need no nigga All this money I see, I can't see no nigga